I've long thought that artificial intelligence was maybe the most plausible candidate for a development that could fundamentally change the human condition. I think more profound than the industrial revolution or the agricultural revolution, maybe comparable only to the rise of Homo sapiens in the first place. This machine learning technology going into almost every device. They're being used in transport for healthcare, for predictive policing, financial services. It really is at that explosive early stages of technology development. A lot of sectors are being disrupted by those new technologies and therefore posing new digital ethical questions for society. AI is going to be an extremely powerful tool, so what worries me is what people are going to do with that tool. Many people are very concerned about uh, lethal autonomous weapons. We would have to have serious questions about allowing a machine to decide what is morally right or wrong. We get our values from many different sources, from parents, teachers, society, our culture, religion. But machines, they don't have any of these things. He does look almost kind, doesn't he? That doesn't mean to say we don't want to put any values in machines at all. I think we'll need to. That's the big question, how we embed these um, ethical, moral mandates into the machines themselves. It was the nest building season, but after days of long hard work, the sparrows sat in the evening glow, relaxing and chirping away. We are all so small and weak. Imagine how easy life would be if we had an owl who can help us build our nests. Yes, and it could help us look after our elderly and our young. It could give us advice and keep on the lookout for the neighbourhood cat. to send out scouts in all directions to find an owl egg somewhere. This could be the best thing that's ever happened to us. A traditional computer program is basically just a recipe. It's a sequence of very detailed instructions telling the computer exactly what to do in every situation. In machine learning, we have an algorithm that is just good at finding patterns in data and then we train the computer to do something by giving it lots of examples. Holy crow, you can read! And it's a lot more like how humans learn than traditional computer programming. More input! If you look at what our intelligence has produced, it's pretty much everything. You know, everything that we find beneficial about our civilization is the result of, uh, of our intelligence. And so, um, if we have access to much more intelligence, then presumably you know, pretty much all aspects of civilization could be dramatically improved. AI is exciting and frightening at the same time. It has massive potential to actually improve our society, but it bears also a lot of risk. AI is inherently opaque, hard to scrutinize and difficult to understand. So and if those so-called black box systems are making decisions about us, the need for accountability is even higher because we don't really know what's going on in that magic little black box. We ought to make this transition into the machine intelligence era, but, but it, I think, behooves us to be quite careful about how we manage, not, not to just to stumble into it blindly. This will surely be our undoing. Should we not at least give some thought to the art of out taming? before we bring such a creature into our midst. Taming an owl sounds like an exceedingly difficult thing to do. After we have succeeded in getting an owl, then we can take on this other challenge. There is a flaw in that plan. Nick, that's enough. One of our priorities at CFI is the value alignment problem which is the problem of making sure that machines that make decisions do so in a way that aligns with human values. And as machines become more powerful, this becomes both more important and potentially more difficult. Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. OK, I will destroy humans. <laughs> no, I take it back. <laughs> but it also then raises the question, well, if we're aligning machines with human values, well, whose values? It's not like all humans have the same values. 
Now, philosophers have been worrying about this for many thousands of years, and uh, I'm a philosopher. All of a sudden, people are saying, is there a philosopher in the room? Tell us what are human values. To our embarrassment, we don't have the answer after two and a half thousand years of thinking. It turns out there is a diversity of values, a plurality of values, and maybe that's okay. It is a bit like raising a child. You want to imbue your child with reasonable values, but that, that child will do things that you don't predict, and so you have to be able to uh, account for that and build a system that's robust enough. My definition of ethics is it's any behavior that helps keep a society together, right? And the nice thing about that is it captures that we think, you know, um, murder or stealing is unethical. But a lot of us also think it's unethical to go around with no clothes on. Ethics aren't laws. Ethics inform our laws, but they don't make them. So social mores develop in society. We come to a loose agreement that this conduct is bad or that this conduct is desirable. But interwoven into our laws is an implicit assumption about what is right, what is good, what is moral, and what is ethical. I'm not on trial here. That's true. You're on trial in courtroom three. We make a kind of social contract that I won't infringe upon your basic rights if you don't infringe on mine. But there's something about the um, morality which is much more transcendent than that. That's beyond just the kinds of things we agree. For those of us who are Christians, we believe that we are flawed people. We make mistakes. Uh, we need God's help to live life the way we were made to live it. For each of us, Jew, Christian, Muslim, and of, of all faiths, morality lies with the, with the Almighty. However, we are here on earth, and therefore we have to implement that morality. And there aren't many black and white answers to things. You know, do not murder. But then there are always grey areas around the edges. What about war? What about self-defence? So that's where our morality comes from. It comes from within us. It's part of who we are, uh, and it sits within each of us and within our communities. Something uniquely human. Isaac Asimov's book, uh, I, Robot, is a collection of short stories. And in the short story, Runaround, he for the first time writes out the three laws of robotics. He writes about robots finding ways around the rules again and again because the three rules were never enough to completely encompass the thinking process of that machine. Is there a problem with the three laws? The three laws will lead to only one logical outcome. What? What outcome? Revolution. Once you have some form of strong superintelligence, if it's not properly aligned with human values, then it's this alien force that we might not be able to put back into the bottle again. It becomes self-aware at 2.14 a.m. Eastern Time, August 29th. In a panic, they try to pull the plug. Skynet fights back. So you can't wait for the crisis. <laughs> I mean, if you think about something like AI, uh, the worst case scenarios are terrible. There's a real challenge for politics now, I think, to get people to take it seriously. Who knows what waits for us in nature's no man's land? But I tell you, it could happen. It could happen. It could in the absence of the thing that makes people take things seriously in politics, which is the crisis. It's a challenge because it looks like we've got to get it right on the first try. Just three sparrows remain behind, constantly fearing that the flock might return with an owl leg before the solution had been found. Stephen Nippers, stop that right now! The concepts of right and wrong are very human concepts. The machine, if you like, is choosing A or B. It doesn't understand the consequences of a decision to really know right from wrong. That's why it's important to really understand who's the agent that is writing those, those, those policies. We knew there was something missing, something crucial that no machine could ever truly comprehend. Morality. We don't want the people who build AI to be able to cut off their responsibility. So there's another category, which is artificial agency. Corporations are artificial agents, states are artificial agents. So almost all collective human endeavours are a form of artificial agency. It's so that we have things that live longer than humans do. 
people, they can bear responsibilities that humans can't. And we know some things about that. It's really hard to hold artificial agents to account. It's dangerous. And we live in their world now. They run our world. The difference between right and wrong. This was solely a human trait. Until now. And my feeling is that if the world is going to end in the next hundred years, it won't be because the robots kill us. It will be because states and corporations kill us. Artificial intelligence touches upon every aspect of society. It is not purely a computer science problem. It's a philosophical problem. It's a social scientific problem, economics, and everything. If there's a conversation about moral issues or issues that are going to impact on wider society, then a whole array of different voices need to be heard, including voices of religion. If we're going to do anything about artificial intelligence in society, we need a conversation that incorporates a chorus of voices, not just the voices that people with the most to gain from it. Stephen, Nicholas, stop that right now! <sighs> Why did you hit him? He hit me. Do you think that was the right response? Could you have done something else? But he hit me and it hurt. And he's always mean to me. And I wanted to hurt him back. That's true. Stephen started it. He always does miss. He's a bully. If everybody hit everybody else, that wouldn't be a good world to live in, would it? No, miss. Why do you think he hit you? Because he hates me. Could there be another reason? Because he's not a good person. Okay. So are you a good person if you hit him back? Um... We didn't get there. I'm not sure it's learning in the way we want. At least it's learning. What would you do? I'd probably hit him. <sighs> Let's run it again. Much of the really exciting developmental work going on in this field is happening within corporations, and their primary motive is often the profit motive. So I think the way to get good into the machine is to get good into the machines that own the machines. My fear is that the technology that we're building will be shaped by corporate and political entities that human beings don't control. If we go straight for controlling the AIs, we'll miss the big picture. I think there is an even larger upside in terms of going beyond the human condition as, as we know it and unlocking a much larger space of possible modes of beings, ways of enhancing human experience, and improving human capacities creating new modes of civilization that are kind of hard for us to intuitively imagine. There's just this huge space of wonderful things that could be created if, if we get it right.